In this video, I'd like to talk to you about a very, very important concept called the business's cash conversion cycle. Sometimes it's known as a cash cycle. Sometimes people also call it a cash to cash cycle. They all mean the same thing. And in my mind, this is perhaps one of the single most important metrics that you need to know, especially if you're running your own business or thinking about starting your own business, because if your business does not have quote unquote, a good cash conversion cycle, you're destined for failure. So to help you understand both the idea and the importance of a cash conversion cycle, let me actually give you an example. So a couple of years ago, I actually got a call from a long lost friend. And you know, as these calls often go, uh, after a bit of chit chat, he said, Look, uh, I've been engaged in this business. I started this a few months ago. The business has been great. I have a lot of demand for the product that I have to offer. Uh, however, in order to fund that growth, I need some money. And so can you help me out? And so I said, Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me a little bit about your business. And so this is what this guy was doing. So basically, my friend had identified a set of consumers who were willing to pay quite a bit of money and were interested in customized products. So customized keychains, pencil boxes, lunch boxes, wallets, you know, what have you. And so he had developed this website where these consumers could uh, sort of go ask for, you know, what they wanted, uh, could give a little bit of uh, illustration on how they wanted the product to be customized. These orders would come in here. And then my friend would basically go to the local suppliers, get the supplies, bring them in and customize them. And he had this, what he had going for him was this cool piece of machinery that he had imported, which was very good at making these customizations. And so he would make these customizations and then sell them. Now the way the business worked is that my friend first went to the suppliers paid a lot of money for the supplies up front. And the reason why he was paying up front is because he wanted to keep his margins high and the suppliers were offering like an upfront 10% discount. So if he made the payment up front for all the supplies, he'd get a 10% discount, which of course, my friend liked, because it improved his margins. So he'd pay up front, it would take about 10 to 15 days before those supplies could be customized. And then when these orders would go to the consumers, the consumers would pay for the uh, for the product at that time. So this model was a cash on delivery model. Uh, in other words, uh, the consumers weren't really paying for the product at the time of making the order, it was only when they received the product that they paid cash on delivery. And so the whole process of mailing the product and then receiving cash for it that was taking another approximately 10 days. So for about uh, 20 to 25 days, basically, my friend's cash was tied up because he paid a whole bunch of money to his suppliers at this time. And then he didn't receive any money for all those supplies until he actually delivered the product to the consumer. And so the business was good in the sense that there was a lot of demand, people were placing orders nonstop, they were really interested in the product, the margins were high, because you know, if he was paying like $1,000 for his supplies, he was receiving like $1,500 uh, from the consumers on delivery. But the problem was that he was always short on cash, as you can imagine, because he was paying all this cash up front, receiving much more later on, but for these 20 to 25 days, he had nothing. And so when orders were coming in during these 20 to 25 days for more products, he was like, where do I fund this from? And that was why he was calling. This is an example of a business in which you have a long cash conversion cycle because it's taking long for your business to convert the initial cash that you put in into more cash later. And so whenever you have a long cash conversion cycle, you will have trouble funding growth, you will find yourself calling people to say, Hey, give me money. And that is where you can run into problems. So here's how you can express this idea a little bit more formally. Let's suppose that on the timeline, here you are today, this is time period zero today. And suppose today you pay like $1,000 for some supplies 
to your supplier. Now it will take you a certain number of days before you convert those supplies into like a finished product and then finally sell them. So let's suppose that's 30 days. In finance, this is known as days inventory outstanding or days your sales are in inventory. Basically, as the name suggests, this is the number of days on average it takes you to convert your raw material into a finished product and then finally sell them. The problem is that even after you sell the product, you may not receive cash for it because your customers might say, hey, I'm buying this product from you, but I'll pay you later. So this generates an accounts receivable, which means that you haven't paid, you haven't received rather the cash for that sale yet. In fact, days sales outstanding is the average number of days it will take you before you actually receive cash for the sale that you've just made. And so let's suppose that your customers take another 15 days on average to pay you for that sale. So this is measured as day sales outstanding or day sales in receivables. And so this means that it takes a total of 45 days before you actually paid $1,000 to your suppliers and the time that you actually receive money for that purchase. In fact, in finance, this sum, this total time, this 45 days, is known as your operating cycle, your operating cycle. So your operating cycle is nothing but the sum of your day's inventory outstanding and day's sales outstanding. Now, in this illustration, the one assumption that we made was that we paid a thousand dollars to our supplier up front. So that's why our cash was tied up for 45 days. But what if we also could tell our suppliers, hey, you know what? We'll pay you for these thousand dollars worth of goods, you know, a few days later. So maybe after like 15 days, then technically, even though you place the order for your supplies here, this is not where you actually pay the thousand. You actually pay a thousand for those supplies. 15 days later. What this really means is that then your own money isn't tied up for 45 days anymore. Your money is tied up from this point on, which basically is 30 days. And so if you are measuring this 15 days as your days, your payables are outstanding, which is based on how long you're taking to pay your suppliers back, then cash conversion cycle is simply measuring this distance how long your cash is tied up for. And so cash conversion cycle is basically your operating cycle net of how long you take to pay your suppliers back. As you can probably appreciate now, the lower is your cash conversion cycle, the better. You as a business owner must try to achieve as low a cash conversion cycle as possible because the lower your cash conversion cycle the fewer is the number of days that your own cash is tied up in the business which is a good thing and you can achieve this in two ways you can either try to lower your operating cycle right so the lower your days inventory outstanding or day sales outstanding the better or you can try to increase the number of days it takes you to pay your suppliers back both will help you achieve a lower cash conversion cycle. The reason my friend was having problems was because he had a high operating cycle and in fact a high cash conversion cycle, which actually eventually led to the failure of his business as well. To help you further appreciate the significance of having a low cash conversion cycle, Take a look at this infographic that I've gotten from 4weekmba.com. It basically shows you Amazon's cash conversion cycle for 2016. 2017, 18, and 19 are no different. And what it shows is that, look, it takes about 35 days before Amazon sells its stuff its inventory. So the number of days that Amazon has its inventory on hand is about 35 days. And then it takes about an average of 20 additional days before it actually collects on all those sales. So if you were to ask what is Amazon's operating cycle, it would be the sum of these two numbers, which is about 55 days. So it takes about 55 days before Amazon sells its inventory and then receives cash for it. The beautiful thing is that all that inventory that Amazon has on hand, it doesn't really pay for all of that to its suppliers up front. In fact, it pays them back in roughly 82 days. 
82 days, which means that if you take this 55 days and subtract the days payables outstanding, Amazon actually has a negative cash conversion cycle. It collects money quicker than it has to pay back its suppliers, which means that it can use all that cash generated by sales to finance in operations and grow even faster. That is perhaps one of the single most important reasons for Amazon's success in recent years. It has a very, very low, in fact, a negative cash conversion cycle. A negative cash conversion cycle literally means that you're using your supplier's money to generate a whole lot of profit and return for yourself. That's a beautiful thing. If you're still not convinced that having a low cash conversion cycle is of extreme importance for a business's success, then perhaps this might change your mind. There's a recent paper by Baolin Wang from University of Florida. Uh, this paper is going to be published in Journal of Financial Economics, which is a top tier finance journal. It's called the cash conversion cycle spread. I don't want to bother you with the details, but basically what Wang does is that he says, look, let's measure the cash conversion cycle of firms. And then after we've done this for a whole lot of firms, let's sort firms into portfolios where you have the top 10% firms with the lowest cash conversion cycle and then the next top 10%. So basically you sort firms from the lowest cash conversion cycle to the highest cash conversion cycle. And then once they do that, they look at their stock market performance and this graph basically illustrates the key finding they basically find that if you take the firms which have the lowest cash conversion cycle so this is the lowest 10 percent the next 10 percent so you're going from the lowest decile to the highest decile so this represents the firms which have the highest cash conversion cycle what they basically find is that the lowest ones, the firms which have the lowest cash conversion cycle, tend to have a positive alpha. Alpha is basically a measure of abnormal stock market performance. Put simply, put plainly, the firms which have the lowest cash conversion cycle tend to outperform in stock market performance terms, those firms which have the highest cash conversion cycle. This is after controlling for every other potential uh, variable that can explain their performance. In other words, having a low cash conversion cycle matters. And so the moral of the story is that especially if you are a business owner, try to have as low of a cash conversion cycle as possible. And if you're an investor, then maybe one of the things that you should screen your investments on is how low of a cash conversion cycle your potential investment has.